Hello and welcome to the second video in this World War II series. This one's on the effects of World War I. The big picture is that the war transformed European and American life. It wrecked the economies of Europe and planted the seeds for a second world war. And we study World War I in part because you can see lines coming off of World War I to all of the rest of the 1900s. And that is really cool to study as a historian, but it's also really devastating because you see all of the horrible things that happen later and how they're connected to um, some mistakes and uh, not great thinking during this time period. But you will see also connections back in time to the Industrial Revolution with all of the weaponry that's used during this time period, the unification of Germany and Italy, which leads them to challenge the other uh, empires in Europe, imperialism, which causes conflict around the world, and nationalism, which makes people blindly follow their leaders into battle. So here's some effects. We can see over here on this map that Ger the German Empire lost a lot of territory, the Austrian Austro-Hungarian Empire lost a lot of territory. In fact, they're split up into two countries and then lost territory to Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia and Romania. Um, the Russian Empire lost a lot of territory. And Italy and France uh, gained a lot of territory. And that's really important to know because it the reshaping of the map of Europe after World War I is one of those effects that carries through the rest of the 1900s. And also you can see that these countries were built this way to more reflect the nations that were there. So people had the nationalist feelings, and then they're like, oh, well, let's have a country that's just one nation. And that way, nationalist feelings will just result in conflict with other countries and not within the country. It doesn't sound, that sounds great. Um, over here, though, another example of how nationalism plays into all this, uh, this is a group of Indian nationalists marching. India was a British colony during this time period. And this is Mahatma Gandhi, who you might have heard of before, but he was a leader of the Indian nationalist movement. And the reason that nationalism was growing in India, one of the reasons, is that Indian troops fought in World War I for the British, and through that process gained a sense of their own national identity and brought that back with them to India. And the participation, not as equals, but as uh, at least allies in the process of fighting World War I, of all of these colonies, so Great Britain's colonies, France's colonies, um, helped to give those places a sense that they were, they had their own separate identity. And that's important because that nationalist feeling in the colonies carries all the way through the 1900s, and by the end, there are a few colonies left. The Ottoman Empire also declined significantly as a result of World War I. At their largest, you can see this orange line that goes right here, they controlled a huge amount of territory. But you can see over time, they were losing more and more of their territory. And by the start of World War I, they had lost everything except this area right here. You can see this sort of darker orange region. And then by the end of World War I, they lost everything except uh, this orange area, not including these brown zones. The brown zones are uh, occupied by Greek and allied forces after the war. So the Ottoman Empire, which we studied earlier in the year, has now declined really significantly and is much smaller and later becomes Turkey uh, after it gains its sort of independence and pushes people out of the occupied zones there. But there are also human costs. Um, because costs to empires, it's, it doesn't really reflect the daily lives, the experience of people who lived through the war. Because there was horrible social disruption as people lost family members and access to food and uh, also their political systems collapsed, like in Russia. And so the social disruption was massive. Societies were in tatters in Europe after this. There was a huge amount of destruction of property because you had... Uh, you, artillery shelling, you had the barbed wire, the trenches, all of that contributed, as you can see here, to the destruction of the actual stuff that people owned. And we can take a look at the actual numbers of that, which I have right here. You can see the cost in dollars of the war. The United States, $22.5 billion. Great Britain, $35 billion. See all these billions adding up? It goes all the way up to $125.5 billion in the dollars from that time period, which means that it's worth even more now. And that's just the Allied powers. The Central powers spent $60.5 billion. So altogether, you had like $185, $186 billion taken out of the world economy and just put into stuff that was used to kill people. So how does that feel? And that also includes the destruction of property as a result of this. So it wasn't just guns, but 
this is a, a total uh, cost analysis of World War One, and so that devastated economies. There was also a significant loss of life, and so here's some casualties and death tables, which is the saddest thing. But here's the countries on this column, and you have the total mobilized forces, which is the size of the actual armies that they were putting out, um, the number killed, the number wounded, the number of prisoners and missing, and then the total casualties, which is the if you add together all these other columns, that's how you get the total casualties. And then over here, it's the number of casualties as a percent of their force. So you can check that to see which countries ended up losing a lot of people compared to the numbers that they put in. The United States, really low. We came in late in the war and just participated in some uh, relatively limited areas. But Russia, who fought through most of the war, France, through most of the war, Romania, they were losing massive percentages of their fighting force. As you can see, by the end, there were about 42 million people mobilized as part of these armies. And there were 5 million killed, 12, almost 13 million wounded, um, 4 million prisoners and missing. So there's 22 million casualties, 50% of the people who were involved. And that was just um, from the Allied powers. And then the Central Powers, right here, you see that Austria-Hungary lost 90% of the troops that they put out, which is nuts. Uh, but there are 8.5 million deaths. I just want to highlight that number. So you can see a massive loss of life that totally changed the face and shape of European society. And so we'll talk more about that in the interwar period section. But at least what I want you to know for now is that these human costs are what made the most difference in the lives of everyday people.